Welcome to today's video, and today we are going to talk about the physiology of muscle growth. Skeletal muscles um, are attached to bone by a bundle of fibers called tendons. While it's easy to confuse tendons with ligaments, ligaments connect bone to bone and tendons connect bone to muscle. And they primarily serve to cause movement when the muscle contracts. So, for example, when I stand here and my bicep uh, contracts, it's going to pull on the tendons in the rest of my arm that are going to cause elbow flexion and elbow extension. Skeletal muscles are primarily tasked with support and movement. And now I'm going to display pictures of the other two main types of muscle tissue, which are smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. Uh, when it comes to smooth muscle, you may notice that they are typically spindle shaped with no cross striation. Smooth muscle is an involuntary muscle tissue. Um, it's also non striated, occurring in the gut um, and other internal organs. They are primarily responsible for moving food through the digestive tract, pushing out urine, and it also determines the flow of blood in the arteries. Both smooth and cardiac muscles are both involuntary muscle tissues where, much like skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle is also striated. Um, it constitutes mainly of the walls of the heart, and sometimes it's referred to as myocardium. Um, essentially, its main job is to pump blood throughout the body, and it can only be found in the heart. Now, let's jump back into skeletal muscle, which is the main reason you guys came to this video, um, and the processes of making it grow. So, to get started with the physiology of muscle growth, we've already touched on uh, the different, the three main types of muscle fibers that you're going to find in the human body. Um, I also have a few key points here that I want to touch on um, that are pretty much just going to be a really quick hit um, for the video, um, and it'll kind of explain everything, you know, how to work out and uh, how to fuel your body in order for it to grow. Here we have the anatomy of the skeletal structure. We're also going to talk about um, eccentric contractions and concentric contractions, um, how to stimulate it with compound lifts, what fuel you need in order to cause these two, which are muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. Um, and I also have a statement down here which reads, in order to build muscle, um, the rate of muscle protein synthesis, which is here, has to be greater than the rate of muscle protein breakdown. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's start here with the structure of the skeletal uh, muscle. Here you have a skeletal muscle which is striated, which I mentioned previously in the video. Um, it's cylindrical, and in each kind of group, each uh, muscle, you're going to have tiny muscle fiber bundles, which are here. In those bundles, you're also going to have muscle fibers, which are cells. Um, in order for muscle protein breakdown to occur, you're going to need to cause micro tears. How do we cause micro tears? So I know a lot of people see people in the gym and they'll put, you know, grab a hundred pound barbell or whatever and they're sitting there curling and they're just kind of throwing it up really quick and, you know, just kind of dropping it or they're doing this thing where they're only doing like half reps. You don't get anything from that but pump. I mean, and a, and a pump essentially is just more blood in the muscle, but that blood goes away within, you know, two, three, four hours of it. And you're not actually gaining any muscle size that's going to last a substantial amount of time. Um, in order to cause these micro tears and the uh, muscle fibers and muscle fiber bundles, you're going to need to focus on the eccentric contractions um, because eccentric contractions increase tension on the muscle as it lengthens. So, for example, when I'm here and say that I'm doing a bicep curl, I curl the weight up. As it goes down, I'm, doing I'm going down slowly, doing a negative. That's another uh, way to kind of... Um, refer to the eccentric contraction. So a lot of people will do, they'll say do negatives and that is very good because when you go up, um, you want to go up moderately fast, you know, control the weight up, don't just throw it up. But um, when the muscle comes up here, when you get the bar up here and you slowly let it go down, what's happening is the muscle is going down so slow, it's trying to hold that weight up as you're going down and it's causing these micro tears. When the micro tears occur in the muscle, 
um, they start to, after a while, after rest and recovery, they're going to start making or going through muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis, essentially, is the process of your muscles uh, growing back stronger. So what happens during muscle protein synthesis is the muscles come back thicker and they multiply. So much like when you break a bone, uh, the bone kind of heals and it's naturally just going to be a little more strong uh, than it was previously. Um, but when it comes to muscles, they're also going to multiply in number. So you're literally growing extra fibers and those extra fibers and the ones that were that had micro tears um, and under, under uh, went that stress of the tearing, um, they're going to be thicker and stronger. They're also going to multiply in number. So literally, you're creating new muscle fibers and stronger muscle fibers. Um, in order to kind of fuel that, you're going to need to look at your macronutrients, which I just uh, uploaded a video, I believe, three or four days ago um, on macronutrients, and you can do that. You can feel free to skip around the video. It's about a, I think, 15, 18 minute video, but it touches on literally every aspect of macronutrients, um, how to count them, apps that will do it for you, um, and different websites you can go to to get a little more information in depth. Um, you're also going to make sure that you are staying hydrated with water. Um, because water, what that does is it helps transport the nutrients throughout your body. It transports oxygen and blood um, to the muscles, which they're going to need to grow and to be healthy and strong and just be able to uh, undergo the stress of you curling, squatting, benching, or whatever kind of exercise you're doing. Um, so that's the fuel that you're going to need for that. You're also going to need stress. So um, you definitely want to go with a program um, of lifting, whether it's body weight, like calisthenics, or you know, CrossFit, powerlifting, bodybuilding, whatever kind of workout you're doing, playing sports, whatever it may be, um, you're definitely going to want to work with, when you're working with weights, you're going to want to go with periodization, so, or progressive overload. So for a short period of time, you're going to do this for you know, two or three weeks, maybe four weeks, and then after that cycle, you're going to jump over and you're either going to increase weight or reps or something like that. So here, uh, you're going to want to work with a progressively heavier load because once your muscles get used to you curling, you know, a 20 pound dumbbell, um, your muscles are kind of going to get used to that and they're not going to yield the same results as when you first started, you know, maybe your first or second weekend curling those 20s and you're going to need to go up to 25s or 30s, 35s, 40s, 50s, whatever it may be, um, lifting the weight slower. So I've noticed recently that when I'm curling, um, I don't do that thing where I pull it up fast and go down slow. I just control the weight the entire time. So I go up, squeeze, down, up, squeeze, down like that. Um, and that's for pretty much all of my lifts, even bench press. I'm doing pause bench presses now, um, shoulder press, shoulder raises. I'm doing everything's pretty much time under tension because time under tension is going to yield um, that greater stress that your muscles are going to need to break down with muscle protein breakdown um, so that you can have a better muscle protein uh, synthesis. Um, after those micro tears start healing, they multiply and they're thicker. Um, and more reps. You can definitely do that. So, for example, say that you get on the bench and you're doing 225 pounds for, uh, you know, that's your max. That's your one rep max. After a while, um, say that you get it to be your working weight for three reps. Progressively over time, you're going to want to overload your muscles and get to where you're doing five reps. Add reps, add weight, um, and move the weight slower, pause, try different techniques so that you can cause those muscle fiber tears, those micro tears, um, so that the muscle protein synthesis yields better results over, over time. Um, so a few compound uh, lifts and exercises that you can definitely do um, that kind of encompass more, multiple muscle groups uh, that are going to definitely give you those micro tears and help you to kind of recover and, you know, with the, re the right fuel, rest, and recovery, you're going to yield greater results. More muscle, you're going to be stronger, you're going to look better, you're going to be healthier in general. Um, so squats, when you're squatting, obviously you're using pretty much every muscle in your leg. You're also using your spinal erectors, your shoulders, um, and your chest as well when you squat. Um, deadlift, similar to a squat, you're using a little more of your posterior chain than a squat usually would, um, depending on your technique, but it should be more posterior chain uh, dominant on deadlifts because you're not supposed to squat the weight up. Those are two separate exercises. Um, the bench press, we touched on that already. You're definitely using your shoulders, your chest, and your triceps, your forearm. You're also using your back. And if you use proper leg drive, which I posted a video on that, 
I believe, a week and a half ago almost um, on just how to bench press technique. Um, feel free to check that one out. I'll try to post the link somewhere over there maybe. I don't know. Um, but we can also do dips because those are going to use your chest, triceps, shoulders. Um, basically, you just want a lot of uh, exercises that are going to incorporate multiple muscle groups. That way you're getting micro tears in multiple places in your body because when those start to recover, uh, literally your entire body gets stronger. So my program right now, uh, my split is kind of chest and back, arms and shoulders, uh, and then legs. So the reason I work chest and back is because those are two opposing muscle groups. And I feel that I look a lot bigger when I'm working chest, and then I go in there and I can do you know some kind of row or pull up or lat pull down, something like that. I feel a lot thicker and I feel like my bench press is actually going up uh, quite substantially. I went from uh, five by three with uh, 225 pounds on bench press, all pause, um, in about three weeks to hitting five by five with 225 pounds, all pause also. Um, and I feel like my technique and my form is actually better now. Um, I feel a lot stronger out of the hole and everything um, on the bench press and pretty much all of my lifts. Um, the military press is definitely going to stimulate a lot of the muscles in your shoulder um, while also using your triceps, your biceps, believe it or not, um, and your obliques. Um, and the row, obviously, is going to be similar to the deadlift. It's going to hit your obliques, your spinal erectors, um, your lats, and your traps, uh, depending on whether you shrug it or, you know, your technique on that. And incline bench press is going to be similar to, it's going to be somewhere uh, in the mid-range between the bench press and the military press. Um, I really like the incline bench press because while bench pressing is good for strength, uh, flat bench pressing is good for strength, it's better for demonstrating strength. If you want to gain strength on your bench press, you definitely want to hit incline bench. Because I started working my incline bench, and I went from doing 205 for 5x3 to 225 for 5x3 in about two weeks. Um, and that's pretty fast um, kind of results just for me working incline bench press more. Um, so if you want to gain strength on the bench press, definitely go with the incline bench. Um, and that right there, guys, is my video on the physiology of muscle growth. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Feel free to share this video link um, and any of my other links with anyone that may be struggling or want to learn uh, more about muscle growth, diet, living healthier lifestyles in general. Um, feel free to share that with them, email, whatever. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Jordan King PT. Uh, same as my YouTube channel. There's actually a link in my, um, on my channel page. And I hope you guys liked it. Uh, make sure you leave a comment, any questions, leave those down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Tumble it.